Yeah, in the spirit of self-betterment, our next uh, demo is from PlanWise, which is personal finance uh, focused on budgeting and savings. So, Cool. Thank you very much. <coughs> Let's hope this works. That's going to turn on. Hi, my name's uh, Neil Wells. I'm uh, originally from Australia and my co-founder is also from Australia. He's the technical guy and I'm the uh, uh, business guy in, in PlanWise. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the way that young people are engaging with their personal finance and in particular we're trying to get people to engage in their future financial plan so they can see the impact of a decision they're making today or perhaps the impact of what their day-to-day -day spending is on their ability to make a decision in the future. And um, to add a little bit of power to that, the, the banks and the credit unions, the financial institutions, particularly here in America, um, have all spoken quite openly about the fact that they're having trouble connecting with Generation Y. They don't know how to market to that generation. What we're trying to do is, is produce a piece of software that will make a bridge between those people and the financial institutions that uh, want to work with them. So let's just jump straight into it. What we've done is I've just created uh, a profile here for a, a girl, Kathy. She's in her mid-twenties. <coughs> She's got $500 in the bank as you can see there, and, and she's got a couple of jobs. So, um, why did that just do that? Let me go, let me go back into that. Live demo. It's yeah. Fancy yeah, that's a very fancy animation of it all going away. <laughs> Exponentially decayed to zero. <laughs> and she's back. So, uh, sorry about that. I think the internet's a bit of a sketch. So, we go in here and we can see that, that Kathy has a couple of jobs. She works at Phil's Coffee and she makes about $2,400 a month for a job there. And she has a little bit of secondary income. She pulls in from Etsy. She sells some, ha some handmade belts. And uh, we can go in here and we can see that Kathy has a bunch of spending, okay? She's got her rent and her food and her dining. She's got some health insurance. She spends $300 on shopping because she buys a lot of shoes. Um, and she's got the internet and all the, the regular things that, that people have. And, and this aspect of the technology will become a live data feed uh, in 2013. But at the moment, it's a manual input. We can then see that she also has a, a visa card and she got a Bank of America visa card a few months ago and she's gone and bought a MacBook Pro and she's put that on. She's paying it off at 17% over nine months and we can see what's going on there. And what that does is it gives us Kathy's current financial profile and we can then forecast that forward over however many years and we show that on the, the graph that you can see. But Kathy also has some plans. She wants to do some stuff. So you can go in here and you can see she's got a bunch of plans. So she wants to take an Italian holiday, she's going to get her tax return back, she's going to take herself off to school and she's going to do a photography course, she wants to buy a car and she's going to make a change in some expenses. And what we can see here is the forward impact of each of these plans, which allows Kathy to see what, what the impact of each of these decisions has, not only relative to her current situation, but also to each other. And you can see that this plan here is to change the expenses. And if we go in and see, the expense she's actually going to change is that shopping expense, the $300 she was spending on shoes. And she's going to change that to $100. And you can see straight away, if she doesn't make that, so if we turn that plan off, we can actually see that Kathy will run out of money in September. So she can see straight away that she needs to make some changes to what she's doing if she wants to achieve what she wants to do in the future. And we can go back and we can turn each of these on and off relative to each other. So we can get rid of the car or we can put the car back on and so on and so forth. We can then show her that in a, in a series of graphs. We can give her a net income that's coming in each month. Or we can go in and we can show her total debt. And you can see that the red graph is the uh, credit card for the MacBook that she bought and the blue graph is the, is the car, which is the future plan. You can see them relative to each other. You can extend the, the graph out over the dates to wherever you want to go. We can then go in and relative to all that information, we can, uh, uh, we can surface any number of alerts, so we can alert her to something that may be happening. 
or we could go in and we could discover some products that would perhaps help her to achieve those goals. And what we're trying to do is we're positioning this software into the, the sort of third, fourth tier credit unions and banks, the smaller credit unions and banks that aren't as technology proficient as the tier one banks. And we're saying, you guys can, can embed this software into your current online banking platform and you can offer to your customers a, f a future financial tool that not only help them, but it gives you the insight into what they're doing. And if you're a bank, and at the moment all you have is the single point of a credit score, I might have a credit score of 500 and Joe might have a credit score of 500, but I run a startup and I make $20,000 a year and Joe has a really good job and makes $100,000 a year. We have the same credit score, but we have quite a different risk profile and we also have different plans. And so we're trying to give a more holistic approach to what the customer is doing. Um, and that's, that's it really, that's, that's plan wise. So thanks very much for, for listening. If you have any questions, okay. Yep. Um, so how do you make money? Are you going to the financial institutions or these like second, third, tertiary uh, financial institutions doing like Kiwi Saver and then we like figure out like Doing. Yeah, that's you exactly like, what we're doing. Yeah, the, you're not charging the girl. No, we're not charging Kathy. But mm. the, what would happen is the financial institution that has the the interest in in mm. working with her going forward would provide it to her. So we've we've actually just done a deal in Australia with a student organisation mm -hmm. that works with students in improving. They provide financial aid, and then they also work with improving financial literacy with students. And they're now offering our, our uh, software on their platform. So when the student comes in and gets um, some kind of financial product and starts working towards student debt, which is a huge problem, not only in this country, but all around the world, they get a, a program that also helps them manage that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is there a way that you could uh, get Fanwise to be used by groups such as nonprofits or Congress? <laughs> <laughs> we actually were going to do the US, uh, the US budget in it as a joke, but we ran out of time. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a girl there with a question. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're submitting her data to a third party. Do you have to agree to the, like, you have a policy? Uh, yeah. No, we're not, we're not submitting any data to the third party. The, the user controls the data. So but the user... Yeah, good question. Sorry, that wasn't clear. Uh, we will have it such that the uh, the user controls the point of time in which that they connect with the financial institution. So the user goes and uses PlanWise in the comfort of their own home, makes their plans, and then at the point in time that they want to connect, they choose to connect. And and part of the reason we're doing that is, that, is to keep the trust within PlanWise and within the platform that we offer. Okay, the, the trust it, it really isn't lying with the financial institutions, especially with what's happened in the last few years. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. The gentleman just in the mustard shirt. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask you about scenarios. So you, in a weird way, you kind of brought it up, but she's got a 14% credit card debt, and then she's got a car payment, and I'll add, I have, you still have student loans you're paying off, and you have a mortgage. So is there a way to determine, like, uh, which choices make the best sense for me? Financially from different scenarios? Yeah, yeah, we are going to work on, on putting a scenario piece in in 2013 that's specific. At the moment, you could just model it yourself. You could just go in and, and model that and then compare it. Okay. Um, but yeah, our user voice data has had some requests for the ability to compare scenarios. So that's something maybe, that we will like work on. Yeah, well, like, for example, is it better to pay off the credit card, yeah. the mortgage, the car? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, totally. Them. That, that's part of what would come in through the alert section. Yep, is directing you towards things like that. Yes. So, how are you going to hook someone to actually want to do that? <coughs> to to make them come sit down and uh, you know link their bank to you or the credit card, or you know why not just get an Excel spreadsheet and just put it in yourself? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, Excel is in inherently difficult. Most of the people in this room probably can manage Excel, but for the general population, Excel is something that most people cannot manage. And, and to be able to do it in a form way basis that just requires the person to come in and fill in the form, this is what you need to do, and graph it for you, is something that 
um, is much easier for the general population. Uh, in terms of getting people to come back into the tool, um, by connecting the live data feeds in 2013, we will be able to compare where you are tracking in reality to where you planned you would be tracking, and we can use that as a hook to bring you back in. Um, and then, you know, mint.com and anything like that, there's a, there's a percentage of the population that want to be uh, yeah, working with this data day to day or week to week anyway. Time for one more. Yes. Um, you mentioned about, about the, the, the bank is you know, paying for the service, so, and it was often they, they see the data up, 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 up what, the, what the bank is? Uh, no, it, it, the data would only be synced back to the bank when the user wanted to connect back with right. the bank. The, the, the feed in from the bank would come. Uh, on a regular basis, but, but in terms of showing the bank what your plans are, that's that's your decision. That's why, your information. And why would the user actually do this? They would so they would share it with the bank if they wanted to use the bank to get a financial product to make a plan happen. So if you have a plan to buy a new car, the financial product that you require is a, is a car loan, then you can share that back with your bank. So from the bank's perspective, what do, what do they? What, they're getting the future, the the future financial plans of, of their customers. If you ask any bank manager if they'd be interested in knowing what the population of the bank wanted to do in six months' time, they'd be quite interested in knowing that information. Great. Thank you.